Hello again and welcome to the second session of Doodle with Mr. T. Today's Doodle will draw inspiration from Cubism. One of the founding fathers of Cubism is Pablo Picasso. Another is George Brock. Together they challenged traditional art styles and decided to paint objects that were broken up, fractured, analyzed, and reassembled in an abstract form. So today I'm going to do a cubism doodle of my cat, Mr. Kitty, and I'm also going to paint this piece of wood with acrylic gesso. Acrylic gesso is used on alternative surfaces so that we may apply acrylic paint onto these surfaces. So if you wanted to paint a guitar, for example, you would first layer a few coats of acrylic gesso and it allows the acrylic paint to stick to the guitar so that it doesn't flake off. So for those of us that are watching this video and just saw an egg carton, I'm sure you're wondering, Mr. T, why do you have an egg carton in this video? And we will get to that, but first, I'm going to doodle my cat, Mr. Kitty, in a cubist art style, and you'll see that I'm breaking it up into all sorts of abstract geometric shapes and forms. And what I'm about to do is something I call shattering. So I'm going to pick a point somewhere in the middle of my form here, and then I'm going to shatter it. And then I'm going to apply color within these geometric shapes. And this is just so I can figure out my color scheme for when I paint. Again, you can use marker, you can use colored pencil. If you don't have paint, that's okay. You can just do geometric, abstract, cubist doodles. So here I have two preliminary sketches, one that has color and one that's just an outline. The outline we can transfer if we want onto our canvas or onto any sort of gesso material. We could do that with tracing paper and the one with color is just to help us figure out the colors we want to use. So I'm using this egg carton again and I like to use egg cartons for mixing paint. So I'm going to add, oh, there's my cat. I'm going to add cyan, which is a lighter tint of blue, um, magenta, which is a lighter tint of red, and then just plain old yellow. And we cannot forget our water cup. And just to review, a tint is created when you add white to a color to lighten it. And a shade is created when you add black to a color to darken it. Now I'm going to quickly resketch my cubism cat and prepare to paint. And I'm not really worried about any mistakes here because I'm using acrylic paint. And acrylic paint is very opaque, meaning it's not able to be seen through it's not transparent. I find that acrylic paint is one of the most versatile paints to use because of how quickly it dries. This means that if I ever make a mistake I can very easily just go over it but when I want to blend I have to do so rather quickly. I often use the white paint to blend in between two colors and mix them together and I always try to use a water cup if I'm ever going to apply a new color of paint. After washing my brush, I find the easiest way to dry is with a sponge. I prefer a sponge over a paper towel because it's not as wasteful and I don't want to ruin a washcloth so it's just the easiest and most efficient way to clean and wash your brush. Now I'm just going to fill in the rest of the background here and you can see I'm applying a variety of different colors, um, lights, and dark blues. Uh, magenta and I'm just going to put white in between any one of these colors to blend them together. You'll notice that as I begin to paint my cubism doodle I am using blue and red instead of cyan and magenta because I want to have colors in the foreground that are darker than my background. And if I have colors in my background that are darker than my foreground that'll work too because all I'm trying to do is create a feeling of contrast. 
a few different ways that you can create contrast with color or with light and dark colors or with warm and cool colors. You can also create contrast with shape or texture. Again, my use of contrast here is to create something that is visually interesting and by applying darker colors in the foreground my hope is that my foreground will pop when contrasted against the lighter colors in the background and as I'm painting this I'm seeing certain areas where the pencil marks are still visible that's okay because I can always add more layers to acrylic if I'm ever not happy with how a part of my acrylic painting has turned out I can always adjust it I can always go back in and fix the area or add more layers to the area that I feel isn't working well so as I finish up my painting here you'll see me start to make some mistakes and also clean up some edges for example I try to add a fourth aspect to the cat paw here and I decide I don't like it so I take some white and I blend it into this darker blue that's already here and that creates a lighter blue which I then fade out into the rest of my lighter blue area and as this dries you'll see me go in tiny little circles and start just to fan out at the end into the blue and it really just blends pretty nicely and you can play around with this a lot and figure this out with just experimenting. Um, white really is the best way to blend any two colors with acrylic. And the rest of my painting here is going to be me filling in a few spaces that I want and just cleaning up some of the edges. And then I'm going to move into something that I feel really brings this whole piece together. So I'm going to outline all of my geometric shapes with Sharpie marker or Sharpie pen. I am personally using Sharpie pen. If you wanted thicker lines, I would suggest that you use Sharpie marker. Um, the reason that I'm doing this is I feel like it fits the doodle well and it also gives a barrier between my contrasting colors in between uh, the foreground and the background that I feel just edges it a little nicer and you'll see as this continues that it's going to really start to pop out a little bit more. As I finish up my outlines I just want to say thank you for tuning in today. Be sure to upload your art to Google Classroom for any of those who are following along and don't forget to tune in tomorrow for the third session of Doodle with Mr. T.